welcome to today's video. My name is Laura and this is my channel, Laura's Little Library. I'm so excited. That's a new intro. I'm so excited. I am having... This is my first time filming this intro. So welcome to my vlog for Thrill Till the Weekend. This is a readathon happening September 1st, Wednesday for 72 hours. So that's until September 3rd on Friday and they have different events happening. Wednesday was a movie night. So we have movie night coming up tonight and I'm really excited. Thursday is a reading sprint and chat kind of time, which I'm very fortunate to take part in. Um, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. It'll probably be up by now. Um, and then Friday is a book discussion for the group book for this little mini readathon. I kind of decided last minute that I was going to vlog it just because it seemed like a fun thing to do. But it's already a little past five on Wednesday. I just got home from work so I haven't been able to and it's my first day of work too so like I got up early and I went to work and I haven't been able to like actually do much today yet but there are plenty of things I need to do because we're in our brand new apartment so there's obviously a lot of setup that's gonna happen which is perfect for audiobooks which is perfect for this readathon because I will be focusing on two audiobooks. I have my sister, The Serial Killer, and this should only take me about two hours to get through. So I'm really excited to just kind of plow through that, get it read. And then the other uh, audiobook that I have that I want to read is The Cabin at the End of the World. So I am really excited to read that one as well and hopefully I'll be able to finish them both during this readathon and then maybe also a physical book. Who knows? Because I do have to work uh, all three days of this readathon. I have to work my eight hour shifts every day. So we'll see if that actually happens. But that's why I'm like focusing. I really just want to get the audiobooks done because I have no excuse to not listen to them while unpacking in the evenings. So yeah, that's that's kind of the beginning. That's what's happening here. It is Wednesday and I realized I have not had time to film tomorrow's video which is going to be my bullet journal for September and I switched my theme last minute so I have to like redo all the planning. So I am going to plan that video and then film that video and edit it and upload it for tomorrow. So that's kind of the top priority. I'll be able to listen to my audiobook during this but yeah, so that's what I'm going to do now. I just realized I left a turkey sandwich at work that I wanted to eat for dinner. Mmm, that's a bummer. Anyway, I will check in with you guys probably when I have finished filming those videos and have actually read something for this readathon. Yay! Okay, it's much lighter. It's, it's 12 o'clock. And I'm tired. And I should go to bed. But here's the thing. So I did finally start reading a book. I started reading uh, My Sister the Serial Killer. I am almost halfway through it. I really like it. I think it's very fun, very interesting. Um, I'm waiting for it to pick up just a little bit. Like it had a really good intro. But I feel like it's about to go into a lull. Not because like it's a lull in the book. I think it's just a lull in what I'm interested about. It's not quite taking the turn I was hoping, but that's okay, um, because I'm hoping to get through it very quickly. I'm hope I'm gonna finish it tomorrow. I'm like, I'm gonna finish it tomorrow. It's gonna be finished tomorrow, for sure. Um, but the thing is, is that my, my clips just uploaded on my computer, so I, I want to edit them, but I'm also just so tired and I just want to go to bed. So tomorrow's video might be late because I have to wake up early to go to work and I work all morning. So my video for sure will not be going up at the normal time unless I stay up really late tonight to do that. But that's just too much work. So yeah, tomorrow's video is going to be up late, but it is going to be up probably after work. And yeah, isn't it's not much of an update. I did do the movie watching event with the thrill till the weekend 
um, Discord chat, and I agree with most things that were said in that Discord chat of, eh, eh. There were some things that were interesting and I liked, but many things were a big eye roll. Classic horror movie. So, yeah, I watched, that's what I did. I watched the movie, I started a book, I started editing. I'm going to go to bed, and I probably won't update you until after work tomorrow when I am about to edit or when I've hopefully finished my book. So, the nice thing about my sister the serial killer is that it's only a four, four and a half hour long audiobook. So listening to it at two point speed, I get it done in just a little over two hours. So I'm almost halfway through, so I've listened to it for about a little over an hour to get it to two hours, um, ish. But yeah, so I'll update you later tomorrow with this fun little thing. Good night. Anywhere you go, anywhere you go, get it on. Anywhere you said, anywhere you said, any. Hello. I am a horrible person because I did not update you yesterday like I said I would or that I was planning to. Basically, I got home from work and I was really, really tired and I realized that my video wasn't ready to go up yet and I had the live show for Thrill to the Weekend and I was really excited and I was preparing for that and then it got to a point where I was ready to go to bed and I didn't update you at all. And then here we are. So now I'm going to update you. I did finish a book. I finished My Sister the Serial Killer. And I liked it a lot. I rated it 4.5 out of 5 stars. There were just a few little things that I wish had been added or better explained in the book. Um, like I wish there was a little bit more of the sister relationship. And I wasn't really satisfied with the ending. But still a phenomenal book. Still highly recommend. It's a nice short perfect intro into spooky season read um and I feel like I don't need to give too much of a description because when I listen to the audiobook and it's only four hours long and the title is my sister the serial killer you kind of you kind of get the idea that there are two sisters one knows that the other one is a serial killer she just also happens to be the one who cleans up at the crime scenes um so it was a lot of fun. I loved it. I am going to start listening to The Cabin at the End of the World for the thrill to the weekend, even though that ends tonight and it's a nine and a half hour audiobook and I don't think I can finish it in one day. But I'm going to try. I did also, let me grab the book. Ooh. I did also restart reading Where the Briars Sleep. I am 70 pages into it and I pretty much have reached the point where I stopped reading it last time and I stopped reading it last time because it wasn't the finished copy and I was really enjoying the book and I'm re still really enjoying it but now I have the finished copy and I was told that certain plot holes were fixed so I wanted to start from the beginning to see if there were any like important changes due to like plot holes being fixed and there were so I'm very glad I started from the beginning. Um, but I'm all caught up now, so I'm about to head into new territory, and I am super, super excited for it. I'm also thinking this may not just be a thrill till the weekend vlog, just because I don't have a lot of footage of just these three days, because these were the first three days that I started work, and I do work full time, so... And I did just move into this new apartment as well, so we're still unpacking some things. So this might also include the weekend because exciting things are happening on Sunday. So, and I kind of want to capture that. So it's going to be like an extended weekend vlog, like a Wednesday to Sunday type thing. It's the intro to spooky season vlog. That's what it'll be, intro to spooky season, which is going to be great. So... I, yeah, like I said, I have a ton of things to do, and I hope to listen to more of the audiobook. I probably won't finish, so then I've only read one book for the 72-hour readathon. But you know what? I read a book. The shortest one you can get because it was a novella, but it still counts. So, yeah. 
I'll catch up with you guys later when I've actually done some reading and hopefully that will be later today and not like two days later. Hello. So, it is 11.15 and I did some more reading. I, well, listened to the first three hours of The Cabin at the End of the World and I am enjoying it, but it's not unique. <laughs> so basically, I, I started listening to it and I was hooked and I didn't want to stop listening to it, but I ran out of things to do while listening to it, so then I would get fidgety and then I would zone out. And that doesn't work, obviously, when you're trying to listen to an audiobook. So I stopped listening to it three hours in and I started watching only Murders in the Apartment, the new show with like Martin Short and Selena Gomez and Steve Martin and blah 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 um, on Hulu. And I'm loving that more than I'm loving the book a little bit, just because the cabin at the end of the world, so they're unrelated, like they're, they're, they're not related in the slightest. Um, the cabin at the end of the world, so this happens within the first three hours, is that there's this family vacationing in a cabin and then these four random people with like weapons come and basically say you have to choose one of your family members to kill and then you have to kill them or the apocalypse comes and all of humanity dies. Which it's not that it's been done before except that it's been done before in very similar ways. Like it just doesn't seem unique at all or fresh or new or anything. And so I'm kind of struggling. I still have six, six and a half hours left in the book. So I'm really hoping it will pick up and I will continue to read it probably tomorrow. But for now, I'm going to watch the TV show because I love it. And then I'll go to bed. And hopefully I'll update you tomorrow when I have more interesting things and can spend more time reading because I don't have to work. Good morning. It is Saturday morning. It's just past 9.30. And I have the whole apartment to myself for a large chunk of the day. So my plan for today is, so first off I'm going to eat breakfast and then I might do a couple things on my computer, but I'm going to largely, hopefully spend the day listening to my audiobook, The Cabin at the End of the World, and cleaning our room slash organizing slash unpacking the last two boxes in our room. We're super excited. Brennan put together the uh, two nightstands that we got from Ikea the other day so I can actually finish unpacking and put things in places, which is really nice. And one of those nightstands I think will be replacing a desk, which is really interesting. Not that we're going to use it like a desk, but it's going to keep all of our desk-like things on there. So... That, yeah, that is kind of the loose plan for the day. And I'm really excited and hopefully, I mean, it'd be really nice if I could finish the audiobook today. And I think if I stay focused, I can. So, and then when all that is said and done, if I don't continue to work on my computer or even after I continue to work on my computer, I'm going to read Where the Briars Sleep. I will finally be able to actually read more of this book and yeah I'm really excited for that so hopefully this day will be full of reading and productivity I really really hope all right let's get to work
I just wanted to stop and say that I got this from an antique store um, and it opens and this is what I'm going to keep all of my baking recipes in because it's a treasure chest. Baked goods are my treasure. <laughs> So it is 10.40 and I have finished unpacking both of the boxes but now I gotta put everything away. The hard thing is, is that one of these nightstands needs to go on the other side of the bed but there's no room for it and I don't think I can move our queen size bed alone because I am weakling. So I'm gonna try and do a little bit more work in here listening to the audiobook. I am enjoying it. I'm three and a half hours in, I've got like six hours left. Um, it's fine. It's kind of a little slow at the moment because it's just like the, the, the people who have them captured are doing something kind of, but then everyone in the chair is just kind of sitting there and I'm just like, okay, when is something going to happen here? Like this is a tense moment. Have something happen here. Resolve the tension. Don't draw it out because you're starting to lose me here. But I've been doing it so far, so I'm gonna keep working on this and I'll catch up with you later. Well, this is exciting. So it is now what time? It's now four o'clock and I've gotten a lot done. I've been very productive and I'm quite proud of it. And also this is the first time I'm sitting in front of my bookshelves in the new apartment to like sit and film and it's wonderful. So, also, yes, I did get new glasses, and I've been wearing them all day for like the past couple of days, minus at work, because I still wear my old ones. So I need bifocals, technically, I'm supposed to, uh, but I refuse, because I hate them. So I have one pair for far away things, and one pair for close up things. So like, the far away things I wear at work, when I'm driving, when I'm like watching TV across the room, but these are my close-up glasses. They're what I use for reading and looking at computer screens and phone screens, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, but yeah, I just wanted to, in case anyone was curious, that is a new thing on my face. But <laughs> anyway, so I decided that in this vlog, I'm going to include a mini haul uh, because I'm going to do a large haul in a couple weeks, but I'm going to do a go book buying with me plus haul. In that video and it's going to be spooky season themed so subscribe if you haven't already so that when I upload the spooky themed videos you can be ready for it um, so I have a stack of books right here of non spooky books or books that will not be included in it why did the lighting just change oh the Sun so I'm going to quick run through these books. There are quite a few of them, so I'm just going to share title, author, and like one or two sentences about of what they're about. So we're going to try and keep it brief, but yeah, I'm really excited to share these books with you and that I have this nice little setup. Also, if the lighting keeps changing during this video, it's because the sun keeps going behind clouds, but not. But I have a ring light here, so you'll always be able to see me in my face. Anyway, so let's get started with the books. First up is Beauty Queens by Libba Bray, and I got this from a friend of mine. She read it and loved it and said I had to read it, and she says this is about um, the contestants in the Miss Teen, Teen Dream pageant um, was going to take a trip to the beach, and then they get stranded, so they have to survive, but they're all a bunch of beauty queens, so... I think it's entertaining. I definitely think this would have been a perfect summer read, but I'm kind of heading into fall 
reads and spooky reads, so I don't know if I'll read any more summer reads this year or if I'm going to wait until next year or until I am longing for a sense of summer, which will probably happen sometime in December. No, I'll be excited for Christmas, which will happen in January. And then I have this. This is Briar Heart by Mercedes Lakey or Lackey. And this book, I believe, comes out next month in October of this year. So it is an arc. It was not sent to me by the publisher. It was sent, so, to explain. Some of these books will have not been released yet, but weren't sent directly to me. They were sent to a friend of mine who has since then gifted them to me, either because she hasn't read them and wants me to and tell her about them, or she's read them and she wants me to read them. So. I'm getting these but not directly from the publisher, not in exchange for a review or money or anything like that. All opinions are my own. Um, but anyway, this is a feminist retelling of Sleeping Beauty. This basically follows Sleeping Beauty's uh, half-sister who has been tasked to protect Princess Aurora so that Aurora can rule the kingdom. And I believe she not only has to physically be able to protect her sister like a badass, but also wield some sort of magic or has to be able to magically protect her sister as well from threats from like the fae hmm gee i wonder why so i'm really excited to read this and i always love more fairy tale retellings and mythology types so i hope to be picking this up pretty soon moving on the next book that i would like to talk about is called the Other Side of Luck by Ginger Johnson, and this also is an advanced reader's copy, but it did already come out in July, so don't worry. This is a middle grade, and it's really, I'm really excited because I've been wanting to read more middle grade. I've been saying, you know, I want to read middle grade, and then I just flat out haven't. Um, so this follows a princess, and after her mother dies, her father basically says, you know, Anyone in the kingdom must go out, find this flower, whoever does gets the hand of the princess, and she's like, excuse you. And so she also goes in search of this flower for herself. And it, so it follows her, but then also follows one pauper who does go and try to find the flower. So, yeah. It's, it's not too thick, which will be kind of nice. Just a short little mid, middle grade to hopefully kick off a long... Uh, line of reading middle grades. I don't know. I can't speak anymore. The next book. A Season of Sinister Dreams by Tracy Banghart. And she is the author of Grace and Fury, which I have not read. Again, another arc that I got from my friend that is already out. It came out in June of this year, so go ahead and read it. This also has two characters that we follow. and One is a princess who does not who has magic and then the other is a farm girl who doesn't have her magic and they end up going on a journey together and they both want to save the kingdom because the men are destroying it so sounds like fun the next one that i have here is spindle and dagger and this is by j anderson coates and this one i believe is out yeah this one came out last year and this is very interesting because the summary has a lot of plot points in it, but it's not that big of a book. So basically, we're in Wales way back in 1109, and this, this person, her kingdom gets taken over by this horrible king, and she ends up, all of her family dies, and so, so she convinces him that he needs her, that she is very valuable to him. And then other political things are happening between him and another country and she's trying to find ways to influence while not giving herself away of someone who's actually not important in the eyes of the court. But I think it'll be very interesting. I think this will be a nice like addition to political intrigue books without being too deep because it's not that big. So yeah, this will be a good winter book I feel like. I don't know why I feel like that but I think it will be. And then I got Somewhere Between Bitter and Sweet, and this is by Laken Zaya Kemp. And this is a contemporary, and I believe it has to do with rivals who make food. So she wants to own her own pastelaria, which is right next to her family's taco shop, but that's not what her parents have in mind. They're like, no, you're going to be a perfect Mexican daughter, and you are going to go become a doctor, a lawyer, whatever. 
and then there's this guy who has just been trying to find a job and so he finds a job at her family's taco shop but I believe uh, issues of immigration come up for him and his family so this will be a really good one I was going through a bit of a contemporary food theme phase uh, this past summer so Moving on to the next and last contemporary that I have on this list is Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. I have heard good things about this one. So our main character is able to see people's relationships, but also how the relationships end. And so because she sees all this heartbreak and sadness, she's not very motivated to have her own relationship. And then the love interest comes along. And that's all I know about it, and that's all I really need to know about it. Um, I love the colors of it though. It's so pretty. It's definitely going to brighten up, continue to brighten up the corner of my shelf where I have all my contemporaries. Whew, fucking right along through here, trying to go as quickly as possible. The next book here is Sunshine, and this is by Marion Dane Bauer. I think that's how you say her name. It's a sad story. I know this is going to be a sad story that just rips my heart out. And I don't know if I'm ready for it. And because of that, I feel like, and because of how short it is, like it's only, like not even 200 pages, I feel like this is a book that I'm going to need to sit down on like a Saturday or a Tuesday, like one of the days I have off from work, and just sit down and read it all through at once, because I'm not going to want to be stopped through it. It's, it's been, it's this little boy, his dad, and his dog, and that's all he has. And so he struggles with the loss of his mom, not in death, but in she left them, as well as this feeling of rejection from his dad, so he finds comfort in his dog, and it's just going to be so sad and heartbreaking. So I'm just going to need to sit down and read this one day, probably at the end of the year when I'm like, oh shoot, I did not complete my Goodreads goal, I better read something short and quick. This is probably what I'll jump to, and it'll make me cry, and it will be okay. And I just now noticed that the outline of the picture is the dog. Like, ugh. Getting all emotional. Let's move on to the next book because I'm getting all emotional. So this next book is The Wicker King. And this is by Kay Ancrum. Ancrum? And basically all my friend told me about this when she gave it to me is phenomenal queer story. And I'm like, okay interesting you know we're always here for queer stories especially because i think this is a queer romance which for it being a mostly black cover you wouldn't really think queer romance when you look at this but what i what struck me about this book is the format it's like normal it's got some pictures and then as you go in the pages get all like oof. so i feel like this will be another quick read that i don't need to know a lot about or i'm not going to because I know I'm just going to sit down and read it, because if she told me to read it, I'm going to read it. I'm sorry, I know that's not very motivating for you to go out and pick up the book, but that's what I got. Now this next one I'm really excited about. I was so excited when she gave this to me, and that is The Hawthorne Legacy. And this is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the second in a series. I, I don't know if it's a duology, or if there's even going to be another book after this, but I know that... The Inheritance Games is the first book, and I listened to that on audio, like, last fall or winter or spring. I don't know. I listened to it a while ago, and I loved it. Everyone is, every, I've only heard good things about it. I'm only really preaching good things about it. It's like Knives Out, if y'all want to go down that route. Um, it's full of puzzles and games, and it follows this girl who all of a sudden finds out that this billionaire left everything to her instead of his family and she's like what the fuck why why what connection do I have to this billionaire so she has to go down to Texas live with the family in that house for a year so she can officially inherit everything and she's like I mean me and my sister need this but like how and so I absolutely loved it. I love the ending. I didn't know there was going to be a second book, but now there is a second book. And now that's in my hands, I am so excited. <sighs> when does this come out? And this comes out this month. I don't know if it has come out or not because I'm filming this on September 4. I feel like it either has come out or is about to. 
but I know it comes out this month, so if you haven't read the first one, The Inheritance Games, it's got the green cover. Read it so you can pick this up because, oh my word, it is so much fun. The next couple books are still books I got from my friend, and they're kind of spooky-ish, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to read them this spooky season because my spooky season TBR is ginormous, and I already have it all planned out, and that will be explained in a future video so again subscribe if you're curious about what my spooky season reading plans are because those will be coming out in a week or two I think yeah maybe next week maybe the week after I don't know I need to look at a calendar but these could be good spooky reads if I have time I'd love to fit them in but they're not my top priority and so the ad is we are the ghosts by Vicki Skinner. So basically the main character's brother died in a car accident and she is investigating it and as she gets close to the people around her brother, secrets unfurl, things happen and she figures stuff out and is like, whoa. So it's, yeah, it sounds interesting and like, like I said, maybe I'll read it if I have time but it's not exactly at the top of my priority list but if you have read this, please let me know. It says it's an advanced reader's copy, but it, it came out in August of 2019. So you, if you have read this, please let me know what you think. If you think it's worth the read, if you enjoyed it, if you think I would like it, if I should make it more of a priority for this year's spooky season, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Same goes with like any of these books. Some of them may be arcs that like just came out or about to come out, but like if you read any of them, let me know your thoughts because I would love to hear other people's actual opinions about these. Because so many of them I didn't, I hadn't heard of until my friend was like, here, take this entire stack of books. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Next one is Verify by Joelle Charbonneau. Joelle Charbonneau, if you want to say it the French way, Joelle Charbonneau. And this one too. So this is another like could be spooky book and it follows our main character who lives a great life. A, it says a world without lies. Like it's very peaceful. She's very happy. And then all of a sudden her mother dies. And when she has these questions that no one is answering, she's like, yo, wait, what's up with this? And then she realizes that there are so many questions that nobody's wondering or finding answers to. And she's like, this isn't right. So she goes down this long investigation to figure out what happened to her mother and what's going on. I don't know if it's kind of like a uh, dystopian or if it's just murder mystery i I'm not sure. But again, it's another one of those, like, I would love to read it if I have time. Now, this last one I have heard people briefly mention on Instagram or people talk about it on Instagram, but I'm just not super sold on it. But just the fact that other people are reading it and loving it are making me re-question my <laughs> ideas about this book. And that is Mercury Boys by Shan Chandra Prasad. And so this is a recent release. And... The synopsis is kind of hard for me to understand, but it seems kind of dark academia-ish, I think. But it's the idea that these girls figure out that using mercury, they can go into really old portraits and meet these boys. Past that, I don't quite understand what the like plot of the book is, if they're trying to keep... It is secret of how they're meeting these boys, if there's something suspicious going on with these boys. I, I don't know, but they start a club. It's the Mercury Boys Club. It sounds like a really cool idea and premise. I just don't see the plot of it, which is why I'm having a hard time picking it up. But you know what? If other people are reading it and loving it, I should also give it a chance. If you know anything about it, please let me know down below. Please. I'm begging you because I have no clue about this one, obviously. Now we're actually going to get into the books that I bought, that I spent my own money on. Yay! The first one I'm going to talk about I am super excited about, and I'm going to try and pick it up this month. It's on my TBR for the readathon that's currently going on, the um, Magical Readathon through Aurelium with G, and I have, I'll link my TBR video down below, and in the description of that I do have the announcement video 
um, linked in that description. So if you want, go ahead and click on my video and then you can get to the original or you could just sit there and watch my video. So I'm really excited to pick it up and I'll probably be picking it up once I finish my current physical reads. Anyway, it's Curse of the Specter Queen and this is by Jenny Elder Moak. Celtic Mythology. That's all I needed. Celtic Mythology and I am sold. I believe that she does start off in a bookstore as well. Like, I've heard that this is Indiana Jones with Celtic Mythology with a female lead. That's all I needed to get hooked on it. It's got a little one here, so I'm assuming it's going to be a series, but I am super excited to pick this up. I, I saw it and I, just, I saw this knot and I was like, hmm, that's like Irish kind of Celtic-y. And I looked up the description and I was like, mine. Bought. So, I will be reading this very soon if I can help it. Then I've got two more books in a series and I have already read them. I, I bought them and instantly read them because I have the first book and I love it. And those are... So those books are the Tea Dragon books. So we have the Tea Dragon Festival and the Tea Dragon Tapestry and they are seasons summer and fall. And I don't know if more are coming out, but now I'm caught up in these and I adored them, five stars each. I just can't do anything but rate them five stars and love them and talk about them. So I am finally caught up on those. And those are all the books that I have to talk about. I did buy more books, but like I said, those will be featured in a haul coming in a week or so. And yeah, so stay tuned for that. Yes, the lighting is changing again. It is the sun. It is out of my control. But I also figure I should probably give you a reading update while I'm here because I have been doing a lot of listening to my audiobook. I have been cleaning up the apartment, finished unpacking the boxes, put away the boxes because we're keeping them for when we move again in two years don't you love don't you love it when you move into a new place and you know that you're eventually going to leave and it's not even like an eventual in like five or ten years it's that it's a soon-ish thing yeah like that's my that's my favorite but anyway I've, been, I've gotten lots of good productive things done. I'm excited to put these books on my shelves. I've got about an hour and a half left in the cabin at the end of the world. And I gotta say, it's done a pretty good job of keeping my attention. Like, for there to not be a twist so far, it's done, it's done pretty good. Because, like, everything that's happened has, like, made sense. It hasn't been surprising. It hasn't been twisty. Like, we kind of knew what was going on from the beginning. But they've done a great job of capturing my attention. I guess I did hit a big twist that I wasn't expecting, but like... Okay, so there was one good twist. But I don't even see it as like a twist. I would say it's a surprising event happened rather than like a twist. Um, but yeah, so it's captured my attention. I am completely here for it. I'm going to finish it today. So help me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm thinking... It could be a four star book, I'm thinking. It really just depends on how this ending goes. Because I do have some little critiques, but I need to not let one small bad thing prevent the book from being a five stars. Because the book would still deserve five stars, even if it's not perfect. You know, and plus it's just not fair for the book. So, yeah, I, I'm gonna try and finish that audiobook and then I will do some actual physical reading, but I do have a friend coming over. Super exciting. I am so excited. Um, so we'll see where the evening takes us, but yeah, that is where I'm at so far. Talk to you later. Hi. So it is 1130 at night and I'm about to go to bed, but I did finish The Cabin at the End of the World. And I'm giving it 3.75 because I feel like it is a very strong book, but it also, there were just so many things that would just like take me out of the story or I, I felt like it would try and lean into the tension so much that it took forever to actually get anywhere. So it would be like this tense filled moment and it would keep talking about useless things as I'm sitting there waiting for things to go on. And I felt like 
there it wasn't as twisty and turny as I hoped it would be. There was one kind of big twist thing, but I don't even consider it a twist. I think it was surprising, but also if you if you read thrillers, you'll see it coming. Like I think because I'm new to the thriller genre, I like like it didn't surprise me, but I could have seen it coming had I read other things, you know? Like it just it was an interesting idea, but it was never fully I don't know. Like, I'd still recommend it. Like, 3.75 stars. I'd still recommend it. I'd still say it was pretty good. But I definitely think there's a lot more in the genre that I'm gonna like more. But, yeah. So I just wanted to update you on that. I finished it. So now I'm gonna... So now I'm probably gonna concentrate more on my physical reads. I do actually... I just realized... I do actually have Beach Read as an audiobook right now, and I'm and I know I said I'm getting into the fall vibes, like I'm, like, starting to get into fall and spooky season, like I'm where I'm reading another like Victorian Gothic novel, but I might just try and quick read Beach Read. Like, I feel like if I were to read it though, I would listen to the audiobook while following along in the book because I did start it physically, and that's how I would like to finish it, but I don't want to take the time to read the entire thing physically because I want to hurry up and get into spooky season, so I might do a mix of audio and audio follow along physically, but we'll see. I might just kind of give up and say, okay, next summer, so, but yeah. So, it's Saturday night, I finished the second book for this vlog, which is really exciting for me, because I've been in and out of reading slumps a little bit, or like not even in a reading slump, but just like wanting to read, but just not having the time and prioritizing like work and cleaning and sleeping and whatnot. So, yeah, it's kind of nice to have say like, I finished two books, yeah, tomorrow is going to be really fun. I have something very exciting happening tomorrow, which is why the vlog is being extended through Sunday. Um, so I probably won't finish another book, but I'll keep you updated on my reading and this fun event that will be happening tomorrow. So, see you in a couple seconds when it's done. Hello, happy Sunday. So we are, we have finished running a couple things, but now we are in the midst of picking up our big surprise. It's really, well, it's not a surprise to us because we know exactly what's happening, but we are super, super excited that this is happening. It is just absolutely wonderful, and it's here in the car. There's a glimpse. Hello! So as you may tell, it is pet-related, but obviously it's not something too big, so... Hmm... I will show you clips when we have them set up at home, as well as give all the information about him. Hi! We're super excited! Oh, also, I did finish The Cabin at the End of the World last night. I had listened all the way up until there were like four minutes left in the audiobook, and then I had to do some things that were time sensitive. And then it took me so long before I could actually listen to the last four minutes. And I gotta say, the ending was a little drawn out. I think they had the same issue that I had with the tension where it was like, okay, you're taking forever and you're losing my interest, but I was satisfied with the ending. I enjoyed it. I rated it 3.75 stars. Um, so on Goodreads, it looks like a four star, but on Storygraph, it is 3.75 stars because it was a solid book. Like, it's a good thriller. I think it's definitely a good beginning thriller, like for someone like me who hasn't read a lot of thrillers but was interested. Um, because it really did dive into the suspense and everything, but yeah. So, it's a solid book. I would still recommend it for people who like the specific kind of thriller, but if you're unsh but if you don't like this kind of thriller, then like don't read it. And I mean, yeah. But I feel like if you like thrillers in general, you'll probably like this book. It was just it was just solid, you know? Not too great, not like bad at all. It was just it was a solid it was a book. It was worth my time. So, I'll let you know more about what I'm currently reading when I get home and I introduce you to our new little friend. Okay, now we're home and I am ready to show you guys our new surprise. Say hello!
hello to Haku! He's our new Russian tortoise. He's quite shy, but I mean, that's kind of how tortoises are. They like to burrow, yes. so he enjoys getting... Yeah, so we got a tortoise! His name is Haku. We are so excited to have Haku with us. We named him Haku because of Spirited Away. It's one of our favorite Studio Ghibli movies and one that I grew up with. And yeah, so we're really excited to have him. We've been wanting to get a tortoise for a while now. Well, we've really been needing a pet, but I'm allergic to fur and we just didn't feel like a cat would do well in our apartment. So we got a tortoise. And we're really excited. We're gonna do some different things with his cage though because we don't want to keep him in a glass tank because he keeps bonking his head and that's not fun. So we are going to kind of do a cool homemade thing eventually. So, but yeah, just wanted to show him to you. I haven't done any reading because I've been kind of preoccupied with Haku. Um, but so I will end out the vlog here, uh, it, I extended it to Sunday purely so you guys could meet Haku, but yeah, I read two thriller books, which is really exciting. My Sister, The Serial Killer, which I really enjoyed, and A Cabin at the End of the World, which was a pretty good book. So yeah, it's a great way to start off spooky season. I'm super excited. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you're new. I make videos every Thursday. However, not only will I be releasing videos on Thursdays, but I will also be releasing bonus videos on either Mondays or Tuesdays. I haven't decided which yet, but I will be releasing a second video every week during spooky season. So, all so starting after this vlog goes up, I believe? No. Starting before this vlog goes up, I'll have my first bonus video. But yeah, so all through September and October I will be posting twice a week because I love spooky season and I feel like there's so much content to play with. So I'll see you all sooner than normal and until then I wish you a happy reading.